One of the most common, if not the singular most universal theme that defies geography, time, place, social status, language, everything, is that we all suffer in common. Hey guys, welcome to my tutorial based on Baroness's Purple album. It's one of my favorite albums, and coincidence or not, purple is my favorite color. This look is based on the album cover art. I decided to use elements from all the four women on the cover. I'm starting off with a clean and moisturized face, and I've got my wig cap on. Then, I'm mixing white and pink face paint on the NYX 04 brush. Ah, this is not pleasant. <laughs> Next, I'm going in with some yellow face paint on the NYX lip brush. I'm going to start mapping out the bees. They're kind of like little exclamation points. Then, I'm going in with the NYX SFX cream color in brown to draw in the stripes and fill in the gaps between the bees. To shade in the bees, I'll be taking the NYX Ultimate palette in warm neutrals on a really, really tiny pencil brush. I'm just shading along one of the sides of the bees' bodies. I'm also making sure to shade in their thorax, which is the little circle part of the exclamation point. Next, I'm taking the NYX gel liner in brown with the NYX number 11 brush. I'm using this to draw stripes on the areas I filled in with the brown cream paint. This will help simulate bees that are hiding in the shadows. Then, I'm going to set all this cream makeup using the NYX SFX setting powder on the number 24 brush. Now with some face paint on a paintbrush, not a makeup brush, an actual paintbrush, I'm going to be painting in the bee's wings. They're basically formed up of two lines next to each other. They're a pretty simple shape, it's just tedious painting a lot of these little wings. Next, using the NYX Slide On Glide On pencil in Urban Cafe, I'm going to draw the bee's heads. It's just kind of a little semicircle on top of the thorax. Next, with the NYX Liquid Black Liner from the Noir Collection, I'm going to trace all the bees. Now, I'm using this liner specifically because it has the thinnest applicator I've ever used in any liquid liner. I love using this liner for extremely intricate detail work. I start off by drawing little dots for their eyes and then tracing the rest of them. I'm tracing the whole bee, including the bee's knees. Oh, I just had to make that joke. I'm so sorry. Then, with the Vivid Brights liner and Vivid Halo, I'm highlighting the bees. I'm just highlighting where the yellow is still visible on their bodies. Then, with the NYX White Liquid Liner, I'm going to highlight their eyes. You just need to make tiny, tiny little dots inside the black dots that you drew in earlier. I'm also going to highlight their wings, just concentrating this on the outer outline of their wings. You don't want to fill the whole wing in. Now to draw in what I can only assume is honey, I'm going to be using the Total Control Drop Foundation in number 1 on a fluffy brush and a lip brush. I'm not going to get super into it right now because I ended up changing this a bit after. Next, with the Vivid Brights Cream Color and Endless Skies, I'm going to start mapping out my little mouse. To start shading and highlighting, I went in with the SFX Cream Paint in blue and white. I kept the reference image open at all times and just based myself off of it. Then taking the Vivid Brights cream color in Rebellious Edge and Sugar Rush, I went in and did some further shading and started to create volume. If you want to paint something like this, it helps if you look at animal anatomy and learn different muscle groups. If not, just try to follow the reference image as close as possible. Once that's pretty much mapped out, I'm taking my Vivid Brights liner in Vivid Sapphire and outlining the little mouse. I'm also using it to create a hatching effect. Hatching is an artistic technique used to create shading. This makes it look more like a sketch or a drawing. And this technique will be heavily used throughout this whole look. Next, I'm taking my white liquid liner and doing the same thing, but on the highlighted areas. Back with my black liner, I'm only outlining certain parts of the mouse that I just want to be a little bit darker. To map out the little doggy, I'm using the SFX cream paint in white. 
Don't be afraid to make mistakes. You can always erase them with a Q-tip. That's why I'm mapping it out with white because it makes it easier to erase my mistakes. Then with the Vivid Brights cream color and Sugar Rush, I start giving some volume and depth. I'm using the Vivid Brights cream color in Rebellious Edge to do some shading too. And going back in with that white cream color to highlight. Again, I'm just following the reference image. You can see I create volume just by adding some white above and around the eye. It feels very much like sculpting, and you can play around with the colors and just have fun with it. To add some more dimension, I'm going in with the pink SFX cream paint mixed in with a little bit of the white. I'm using it mostly on the ears and the nose. I'm also going in with the black SFX cream paint to create deeper shadows. To fill in her eye, yes, it's a her, I decided it's a her, <laughs> I'm going in with a bright green face paint on the next lip brush. I'm just applying a couple layers and then highlighting it with a white SFX cream paint. I'm taking the black liquid liner and giving her a pupil and outlining her. Next I'll be doing a whole lot of that hatching technique using the Vivid Brights liners in Vivid Violet and Vivid Blossom. As you can see, this just makes it look more like a sketch, as opposed to a painting. For finishing details, I'm highlighting her eyes and her nose with a white liquid liner. Using the pale pink lip liner, I'm starting to create shapes in the honey. You just want to make different sized blobs and drips. Then, with a white gel liner on a lip brush, I'm going to be highlighting this. I chose the gel liner because it doesn't slide as much on top of the foundation, as opposed to the SFX cream paint. And if you know me, then you know that I love me some tappy texture. Oh yeah. You'll be doing a lot of this to give this honey some texture. I know I'm calling it honey, but it's probably sap from the flowers and the plants, but whatever. I'm still gonna call it honey. Then you'll be doing the same tappy texture with a white liquid liner. Again, you're just tapping the brush all over, concentrating it around the edges. Now with the Epic Ink Liner, I'm going to be outlining everything that I want to give a thick line to. This liner is awesome! It's not a felt tip, it's a brush tip, so the ink flow is constant. It's pretty. again with the bees oh, Okay, someone please stop me. Now finally moving on to the face, although I am going to go back to the chest. I'm taking the SFX cream paint on a sponge and just applying it to the high points of my face. Then I'm taking the Rebellious Edge Vivid Brights cream color and doing the tappy texture on my face. I also took a variety of electro liners and created some dotting around my face. Now for the texture on the face, it will be pretty much tappy texture, and if you don't like me saying tappy texture, we'll get over it because that's what I call it. Because it's literally that, you're just tapping the brush on your skin over and over again. Then I took some pink and purple face paint on the NYX 04 brush and created larger areas of texture around my face. You'll want to do this dotting effect in the areas that you want to shade and contour. Taking more of the cream color and kind of contouring my eyes, I'm not applying it right up against the lash line. I'm leaving a little gap between the lash line and the purple line. I'm then lining my waterline with the NYX Faux White Liner and Lavender Blush. I'm also applying it between my lash line and the purple line I just did, and in the inner corners of my eyes. I'm then applying the purple on the inner and outer corners of my lids, and filling in my brows with that purple. Once I've shaped them the way I like them, I'm going over my brow hairs with a cream color and sugar rush. And then back to more texture. Now I'm taking a different tone of purple face paint on that same big fluffy brush and creating more texture on my face. Now I'm going to be doing the same technique, but on my highlights using a white face paint. Just apply it on the areas where you applied the white cream paint before.
Now with some purple face paint, I'm going to create the hatching effect on my body. To do that, you'll have to do a sort of dry brush effect with the big fluffy brush. You don't want to get it too wet, but you do want product on there, and use a very light hand to create these streaks that will mimic the hatching effect. And do the same with the white face paint on the areas you want to highlight. To shade in my neck, I'm going in with some black face paint. I'm just applying it really close to my jawline. Now I'm moving on to my lips and I'm highlighting around it using the white liquid liner. I'm filling my lips in with a combination of the Sugar Rush cream color, the pink SFX cream paint, and the Rebellious Edge cream color. Then I'm applying the NYX Lip Lingerie and Embellishment to the outer corners of my upper lip and the center of my lips. Once I'm happy with the colors on my lips, I'm going to create highlights on my lips by using the same little tapping technique I used before. Then to create some more depth, I'm going in with a dark brown gel liner and just applying it to the inner edges of my lips. I'm also applying it under my mouth, around my nostrils, and below my eyebrow. And I'm highlighting my nose with a white liquid liner. You'll want to draw lines really close to the opening of your nostrils. I'm also applying it under my lower lash line, in the inner corners of my eyes, and taking it onto the center of my eyelids. So I thought I was basically done, and I put my wig on. And then I added the screws to my wig. Now be careful if you do decide to do this. All I did was push them up against the lace of the wig, and they kind of just stayed. So at this point, I had been painting for almost 20 hours, and I thought I was done, but then no. I saw that I had just a whole lot of blank space, and I had to fill that blank space. So I decided to paint the only animal that was missing from the album cover, and that's the hawk. Or, I think it's a hawk. It's a bird. Whatever. So I painted him the same way I painted the other animals. I created the base with the white SFX cream paint, and started giving him dimension with the Vivid Brights cream colors. The feathers were painted individually using the white SFX cream paint first. Then I outlined them using the Vivid Brights liners and shaded them using the Vivid Brights cream colors and outlined it with the Epic Ink liner. The only thing I did off camera was its eye, which I filled in with red and highlighted the same way I highlighted the dog's eye. So here's when I decided to change the shape of the honey. I was going to have my arm up for the final image, but I decided to not do that, so I'm changing the direction in which the honey drips. I also added some more highlighting around my body for good measure. I filled in the bigger area using the eyeshadow brush and then did some detail drops using the lip brush. I also added some to my other arm to balance it out. And this is more of what you saw before. I created some shading with a lip pencil and then highlights with a white gel liner. And then did a whole lot of texture using both the gel liner and the white liquid liner. Once that's done and traced, I outlined myself. So to do this, I used black face paint on a flat brush, and I created thick outlines around my shoulders and jawline area, thick enough so that they would be seen when I was posing for the final image. Don't forget to also outline under your arms. You want to really look like a drawing, so every part of you has to be outlined. To outline my facial features, I used the Epic Ink Liner. I went around my nostrils and along my upper lash line. I thought the hair was looking a little flat, so I went in with some black face paint and just colored in the roots. I actually custom colored this wig, and I'll have a video for you showing just how I did that. So stay tuned. And that's it. A lot of you asked me how long my looks take to do. This look took me a total of 22 hours to paint. I didn't sleep and I powered through, and I'm glad I did. It's a true honor to be able to create something inspired by one of your favorite artists. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye!